Well, hello there. It's a Sunday afternoon in May. I am Arthur Morris, and I've been photographing birds for 38 years and loving it. I can teach you how to make better pictures of birds. We'll be looking at these images in Photo Mechanic. So I've left this little strip here. You can see the focal length, 1200 millimeters, the aperture, the shutter speed. So you can learn a bunch by pausing the video and checking out the EXIF. As I said, I can teach you to make good pictures. This at 280 millimeters at Stick Marsh. The best way to learn is to get on a trip with me. There's lots of room in Jacksonville this summer. I have three trips. I'll be going back to San Diego in December and January. Incredible stuff there. The Homer Catchamac Bay Bald Eagle IPTs. In addition, I'm probably going to be doing Nickerson Beach on Long Island in August, and a Jamaica Bay trip as well near the end of August. Sign up for an IPT when you need some new gear. Get 3% back on your credit card by using the Birds of Art code at checkout with Bedfords. Mostly we're going to be trying to photograph single birds in flight, but we were out on the beach at Jacksonville one afternoon, and these three royal terns flew by in formation. Bingo. Can't do much better than that. We get some pelicans in flight in good conditions. I like the background of laughing gulls here. But for the most part, we are photographing royal terns in flight. So if you see here the focal length 600 millimeters f4, that tells you that it's the 600 millimeter f4 GM, the super telephoto lens. And here, focal length is 200 millimeters. That's the 70 to 200. Imagine how close some of the birds are. I don't love this one because I wish that the bill were centered on the bird's belly. Pretty cool shot. Give you an idea what you can do with very short lenses. Whenever you see the f6.3 aperture, it tells you that I was using the Sony 200 to 600 G lens. It's much easier to handhold for flight than the 600 f4 which weighs a ton more. By the way, we don't get a lot of chance to make vertical originals. Most, like this one, are cropped from horizontal originals. What's amazing at Jacksonville is the variety of prey items that the birds are bringing in for the chicks. This is a big old gulf shrimp or an Atlantic shrimp. This is a cutlass fish, and we see them all the time, have dozens of good pictures, also called scabbard fish or silvery hair tail. Royal Turn with a Spanish mackerel. I had a long series of these, and I like this one the best because the fish's head was separated from the tail. The turns routinely bring in squid, and after capture, the squid will ink the turns and stain their feathers at least for a couple of days. So 309 millimeters at f7.1 tells you that's with the handheld 200 to 600. And sometimes we get photobombed. Here we have a royal turn on a cloudy day coming in with a baby blue crab. This is the converted tiff, and you see there's a messy dust spot. And of course, the bird in the background is not too helpful. But when we optimize the image, we get rid of the bird in the background. We can teach you those techniques. There's lots of time during the middle of the day at Jacksonville to do Photoshop. And if you look at the shutter speed here, you'll be amazed. 1 80th of a second. I was trying to do blurs in early morning. And because I pan perfectly, the eye of the turn is sharp. This is unsharpened. We'll teach you as the birds come in to follow the birds as they land with a prey item and zoom out a little bit and get some images with the chicks up on the top of the dune. And here's another one, same idea. And this is with the 200 to 600 at 400 millimeters. Laughing gull, not the greatest wing position, but it's carrying a pipefish. You don't see that every day. So when I optimize the image, I brighten it a little, cool it down a little, and do a crop from the bottom, a little Gaussian blur, and make a nice panoramic image. The laughing gulls will be constantly trying to steal fish from the turns. And once in a while, you'll be in the right position. So far, all the birds that you've seen are flying towards me with the light behind me. It's called wind and sun together. But sometimes you go out and the wind is blowing at the sun. That's bad. So you have to be creative and look for different situations. Here, I brought the group over and had them photograph the backlit turns 
against the shaded face of the dune. And this is just one image, but everybody made dozens of wonderful ones. Similar situation, the sun is going down in the west, but the wind is from the east. You don't want the sun in the frame, but it's a little bit hazy. So this is the original. You see I'm exposing to the right. And this is the image processed straight up to make it look like a backlit image. A little bit of light coming through the winds. Of course, that's not very effective with a white sky background. But what folks don't realize is that you can always go gold silhouette route. Same image, just different processing. I've never been a great flight photographer. And here you see that I have trouble just keeping the bird in the center of the frame. And got photo bombed by two birds in the background. Photoshop takes care of that easily. And with the Sony A1, 51 million pixels, a decent crop doesn't do anything to the image quality. Here's another one, didn't pan fast enough. Easy to expand canvas using content aware crop and put the bird back in the frame. We'll be teaching you how to get the right exposure in sunny conditions with blue skies. Here's another one, sunny with blue skies with a photo bomb bird in the background. Lose that, we'll teach you how to use quick masks. And we'll teach you how to get the right exposure on white sky days. Here again, the 70 to 200 2.8 at 195 millimeters. At f2.8, exposed properly to the right, and there is the optimized image. So if you learned a little bit in this video, imagine how much you could learn spending four days with me. Hope to see you somewhere. Be safe, have fun, and make some great images. Love you, Artie.